Okay, we're going to analyze um, a very famous and historically significant photograph called the Coloma photograph. And uh, Dr. Kirshner, why don't you introduce this? Well, uh, now we're really headed into, uh, into troubled waters because um, this was the photograph that appeared uh, on the cover of Glenn Boyer's book, I Married Wyatt Earp. Um, and when uh, certain facts in that book were called into question, so was the photograph. And there has been elaborate um, controversy over the, the photograph. Um, well, I didn't burn, burden um, our expert with any of that to begin with because I wanted him to bring his expertise really to, to bear on it. Um, and then afterwards we talked about some of the historical context and controversy of this, of this photograph. Um, so you came at it really from a relatively um, you know, controversy-free point of view. Mm -hmm. And again, we're, we're looking for consistencies or inconsistencies in facial features, okay? Uh, observed consistencies or observed inconsistencies to help us point in one direction uh, regarding uh, authenticity. Um, this is a highly reproduced image, and as seen, I, I put five different versions of this same photograph. It's, it, um, wherever and whatever the original was taken, um, it has been coloring has been put behind it, it's uh, been re-photographed, um, the exposure has been different, the backgrounds are different. Um, it is the same original image, but it has been reproduced to the point where um, I wanted to take a look at some of these so I can get a, the, the best possible, the closest possible image of the original as possible. Um, um, this just denotes the, the differences, it's a little pixelated here, but um, how different the, both are considered Coloma photographs, but they both look very different. <clears throat> One of the things Dr. Kirshner, she was skeptical about the Coloma photograph actually being Josephine Earp because she said, well, her hairstyle is not like the time. It wasn't uh, of the time. And I, I went in and I sort of um, up the contrast, or excuse me, lower the contrast of the photograph uh, to see if this was actually her hair, and it turned out to actually be a veil that she's wearing. So this, this silhouette, this outline, is actually a veil. It is not her hairline. When, we, when I reduced the color uh, contrast, uh, you're able to see these very thick curls um, and the veil itself. And so um, it is not a wig. It that is, was a revelation. Yeah. That was a revelation, because okay. that's what everybody said, you know, that this, is, this couldn't possibly be her hair, but in fact it wasn't her hair, it was a veil. So right. um, that was a huge contribution to, um, to the studies of uh, Josephine Earp. Okay, so the Coloma subject is wearing a veil with her curls and hair coming through. Um, we can now take a better look using this photograph, or this rendition of the Coloma photograph, to help us do a photo-to-photo -photo comparison. Um, you know, the, the parting of the hair and what seems to be this hair spike at this spot where we've seen on the, in most of the authenticator photos, there does show a consistency in this regard. Um, I'm using this photograph as a reference because I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that there are enough consistencies in this photograph that it points into the direction that it is, in fact, Josephine Earp. So, um, if we're going to follow this logic chain, I wanted to use this photograph as a comparison. Because the Coloma photograph, because the, the chin is tilted up so strongly, and we have very few image, authenticated images of Josephine straight ahead with her chin up, um, this was kind of the closest photo-to-photo -photo comparison um, photo I could use for the comparison. Um, but um, I do think I see a, a parting of the hair, and I do think I see this little hair, spike in her hairline that we've seen in all of our authenticated photos. Also, this thick curly hair that comes underneath the veil, that, that pops out of the veil, is consistent with the thick hair that Josephine has. I wanted to focus on the facial features around the center of her face. The upturned nose, the upturned nose, which is consistent, the cupid's bow, and fullness of the lips show some consistency. Again, I was not able to make a measurement because the head was tilted up to the point where the, it, it would be very difficult for me to actually find an accurate measurement because the, the perspective has changed and thus the measurements will ch have changed. But um, 
you know, maybe even the fact that her her chin is tilted up is something that she always did. You know, it's, it's, it's extreme here, but it's kind of an extreme. Well, photograph. it's also you know she's posed here, right? Who, whoever took this photograph, I mean, clearly she was she was dressed up. This was this was to make some sort of a, an, an impact, and so it doesn't have the the more um, the slightly more candid or, or personal version of all the other portraits. This one really is a photographer's image of, of this woman. Mm. Huge confidence, you know, that when, when you lift your chin like that, I mean, it really is sort of a sort of a powerful pose. But um, I just wanted to highlight this because of the, the similar facial features in the lips, nose, and the filter Mary. <clears throat> I highlight, I'm going to go through and highlight, and this will be on the slideshow, and I won't take too much time in this presentation, but I went in and highlighted each of those facial features. Cupid's bow, pouty fullness of the lips, upturned nose, chin angle, similar. Uh, this is the same angle on each of these slides, so it fits, it fits into that jaw area. Uh, too bad we can't see her ears, right? <laughs> it is too bad, but that's you know that's a bad break. But um, I thought this was quite interesting. The um, her eye area creates a sunken sort of shadow here that actually has a shape, and the shape is actually capped by her eyebrow. Um, I saw a similar shape when I highlighted her her left eye here, where it sort of, it makes a um, it makes a similar oval shape the sh where the shadow sort of falls into that pit of that eye in, in a very similar way, again, capped by a, um, her eyebrow. Um, it, it just seems similar and consistent to me. With, with Professor Lane's analysis, I went back and looked at all the reasons why that photograph had been debunked. Um, and one by one, all of those reasons kind of fell away. It's not her hairstyle, it's a veil. Um, it was a mass-produced photograph in 1912. Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't based on a photograph that was, in fact, taken around 18, 1880. In fact, so. a lot of the reproductions were <coughs> early 1900s or 1910s, mm -hmm. um, where the ability to reproduce started to come more into play. So, there's, like you said, there's no reason that they couldn't take the existing photo, which was taken around 1885 or 1890, about and then reproduce it later. Yeah, I think it was probably earlier, but I think what I take away from this is that there, there's no proof that it isn't, um, and there's a tremendous amount of analysis that demonstrates that it could we're, be. We're showing some visual consistencies, and that's really what the name of the game, what we're doing right now is. Um, so, we'll talk a little bit more about it in our final analysis.